Hello to all the emerging scientists joining us today. My name is Professor Christia, and I would like to welcome you to Henkel Researchers World at Mill River Park. Henkel Researchers World is a STEM education program designed to explore the fascinating world of science and spark your curiosity by putting you in the role of an actual researcher. Today we will conduct a short series of experiments to learn about recycling and more. In the next 20 minutes, we'll be exploring how to identify and separate plastics. Now, I'd like to hand it over to my colleague, Professor Trent, who will guide you through the experiment. Hi, I'm Professor Trent. Did you know that there are seven different types of plastic in the world that you interact with in your life every single day? Well, today, we're going to be exploring what those different plastics are and how we can use the concept of density to maximize our ability to recycle them and reuse them and help protect the environment. There are seven types of plastic, and I have them here on the table in front of me. But before we get started, I want to go through what you'll need to do this experiment at home. I have two containers of water, but to do this experiment, you only need one. Preferably, it should be taller and skinnier instead of short and fat. It'll work better if it's more similar to this type of container. You'll also need something to stir with. Make sure it's tall enough to reach the bottom of your container. You're going to need a spoon, as well as something to change the density of the water. So I have a bowl of salt. Sugar would work as well. Whatever you have at home is fine. Density is a measure of mass to volume. Now, what does that mean? In other words, you could think of it as the thickness of a liquid. Something like syrup is more dense than a liquid like water or soda. Well, what we're going to be doing today is starting with regular water and adding salt to increase the density. And as we do that, it'll create the ability for some of these plastics to float. So think about a trip you've taken to the beach where you've gone in the ocean. The ocean is salt water. It already has salt in it. You can float much more easily in that salt water ocean than you can in a pond or in your pool because the salt in that water helps you float. You're going to see that today demonstrated in our experiment. So, what I'm going to be doing is taking these seven different plastics, which we've collected from everyday items, and adding them to these two containers of water. This container is going to be what is called our control. In other words, we're not going to add our experimental variable to this container. We'll be able to see what happens if you don't add any salt to change the density. This container we will be adding salt to, and we'll watch what happens to the plastics in this container compared to the plastics in our control container. So we've prepared examples of seven different types of plastic that you can find in your daily life. There are many, many items that we use that are made from plastics, and we've chopped them up into small pieces to make it easier. If you decide to do that as well, please get a parent to help you so that you don't hurt yourself. Let me show you how to identify what types of plastics you have so that you can look around your home and find some for this experiment. The first one I have here in my pocket is a produce bag that you would get from the grocery store when you're purchasing fruits, vegetables, something like that. If you look here on the bag, you'll see a recycling symbol with a number inside of it. This type of grocery bag is a recyclable plastic number two. I also have a bottle of cleaner here where if you flip it over and look on the bottom, you'll again see that same triangular recycling symbol. And this one is a plastic number one. So there are seven types of plastic, and I have them all sorted out here. <clears throat> We're going to start at this end with plastic number one. It's a PET plastic. It's a mylar balloon, the type you would get from the store for a birthday party. So I'm going to add some of this here. And I'm going to add some 
to our control. This is going to get messy. Here I have another type of plastic, number one, a PETE plastic. This is uh, from a lemon juice container. You've probably seen them in your fridge. They're shaped like little lemons. So we're going to add a couple of these. And we'll add some here. Here we have the produce bag. Toss a couple of those in. I'm just going to stop for one second and here. Create some room for us. Here we have a plastic number five. These are the little rings that are connected uh, to bottle caps when you open a bottle of soda. And speaking of soda, here we have another type of plastic number five. This is a straw. Next, we have a yogurt container. And you'll notice that as you're doing this, these plastics, they, they actually feel quite different. There's, this is a very brittle, hard plastic as opposed to the bottle cap or the straw, which is a much softer feeling. And the type, uh, final type here is a plastic number seven. Um, this is a, uh, from a CD or DVD disc. Okay, so we've now created this mess of all different types of plastic. And remember, this container here is going to be our experimental container, whereas this container is going to be our control. So I will not be adding any salt to this container, changing the density. So now you can see that there's plastics suspended at different levels of this container. Um, some immediately go to the top, others sink down to the bottom. Right now, the density of this water is unchanged. It's just like any regular tap water that you would get out of your sink. And what happens at a recycling plant once the town has come and collected the recyclables off the curb at your house and all your neighbors is they dump all of your plastic waste into containers just like these, but much, much larger. And they're going to increase the density of that water slowly by doing something like adding salt like we're about to do. And What's going to happen is you will see different plastics suspended at different levels of the container once the density changes. By doing that, they're able to sort them out because you can only recycle plastics with the same number and type of plastics. We cannot recycle these type of plastic number seven together with these plastic number two. Um, they're made with different ingredients, they have different things in them, and so we need to make sure that we sort them according to the type of plastic they are. So when you're ready, take your salt, this is just a regular tablespoon, and we're going to begin by adding two big scoops. Now if you use slightly warm water, it'll make it easier for the salt to dissolve, you won't have to stir it quite so much. So we used some nice warm water here. And we'll just give it a few seconds of stirring and we'll see if anything changes. So as I said, there are some plastics that they just float at the top immediately. Those ones are easy to sort out because they're already at the top of the water column. Uh, 
at most recycling plants, there would be some sort of machine arm that would just kind of come across and sweep those out of there and sort them off to the side. So now that we've added our sugar, uh, salt, sorry, you can see that some of these plastics are beginning to float or at the very least, they're kind of standing up at the bottom here, which if we compare it to our control, you'll see that those ones are not doing that. So immediately we can tell that by changing the density of this water, something's beginning to happen. We're beginning to see some results. So let's go ahead and add a couple more spoonfuls of salt. Again, we'll give it a good stir. We wanna make sure that that's not just clumping up at the bottom. Okay, give that one second to settle. So now you can see things are really starting to move in there. Uh, it looks like these lemon plastics are beginning to float up to the top. And we're also seeing the bags suspended in the middle of the column. You really want to make sure you're stirring this well. Otherwise, I can tell by just looking in there that the salt is all clumped up on the bottom. Once that stops spinning, we'll see what happens. It looks like pretty much all of the purple number uh, six plastic, um, which was again our yogurt container, you could see in our control stayed on the bottom. Once we added this salt, that immediately brought those to the top of the water column because the water is now dense enough to support those uh, plastic particles and, and allow them to float. So the only two plastics that are left on the bottom now are our plastic number seven, the CD, and um, our plastic number one from the lemon container. So let's continue to add some more salt and see if we can't get those to float as well. Now in a recycling situation, there would be machinery that would be able to reach into this tank at various depths. It wouldn't only need to scrape items off the top, but it could go in the middle of the water column or even down at the bottom to collect various types of plastic. What the key is is that we want the different types to separate at different levels, and that makes it easier to sort them and harvest them independently. Okay, I think we've got something here. We'll let it settle and it looks like these plastic number sevens are really beginning to float. There's a couple pieces that are still tangled in with our yellow plastic number one down at the bottom, but I think we're very close to getting those two to separate. So we're gonna add in just a couple more heaps here and see if we can't get those two to raise. It's getting very thick. You can tell the density is changing. You could probably even see on the screen that the color of the water is beginning to change because there's now so much salt in this container, whereas our other container is still pretty clear. Okay, let that settle and let's see what we've got. So you can see that the plastics number seven, the CD pieces are really all pretty much floating up to the top now. There's a few still tangled down at the bottom but they're working their way up and what we're left with is just this yellow plastic number one down at the bottom which can be easily separated and collected independently from the rest of these plastics. So today's experiment demonstrated on a small scale 
what many communities around the world do in utilizing density as a tool for sorting out plastics and maximizing the ability to recycle and prevent those plastics from getting out into the environment and causing harm to people or animals. So until next time, thank you for joining us and we'll see you again soon for another Researcher's World experiment.